Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel for today's video. Kind of a two-in-one video. I don't know, it's like a get ready, a little portion of a review. The main focus of today, my Eyes of a Star palette finally came in from Charlotte Tilbury. So I'm going to be demoing this quad, but I'm also gonna do a get ready with me just using some Charlotte Tilbury products I have in my collection. So we do a full face of Charlotte Tilbury. If you are only interested in the quad and what I have to say about the quad, I will put the timestamp right here. Just go ahead, fast forward to that. It's a pretty quick demo, so I'm not gonna take too much of your time But if you want me to take your time and you want to see just how I got this whole shebang using all Charlotte Tilbury products and just keep watching You guys always ask me where I get my headbands from I get them from random places forever 21 is the best place I can't remember specifically where this one is from but forever 21 has the best ones I've also gotten some from charming Charlie's and just random spots here and there in the Dollar Tree yeah <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna start off with the Wonder Glow Instant Focus Beauty Flash. So it's been a while since I've used this. As you can see, this is just a sample, but yeah, I'm not too moved by this. I just prefer, if we're talking about bases for Charlotte Tilbury, I prefer using her Magic Cream. That's my favorite primer of hers, even though that's more so skincare, not necessarily made for makeup, but I like that as a pre-makeup primer. And then also, I just prefer her Hollywood Flawless Filter highlighters as a base so this one like it's not moisturizing it does give like a very natural sheen to the face but it really doesn't do much I feel like I don't know maybe that's just me but we used it today I have our new friend right here so we'll just avoid that <laughs> all right now let's move on to foundation I'm using a mixture of the airbrush flawless foundation and mixing it with a little bit of the light wonder foundation <laughs> I don't know I don't feel like going full full coverage today and this one's pretty light coverage both shades are way too light for me so just ignore that I'm just gonna look on the lighter side today, which is okay for some reason, most of the Charlotte Tilbury base products that I have are all way too light for me. I like to use my fingers first to really blend the formulas together. I'm just gonna use my sponge. I love both products that I'm using though. Both are really, really beautiful. And I'm going to mix on the forehead. Now I don't own any Charlotte Tilbury eyebrow products, so I'm just going in with my Sigma brow pencil and quickly going to go ahead and do that. And then I've been using this Ardell Brow Enhancer and it's such a creamy product. It's really great for sculpting out the brows. And then I'll take just a flat synthetic brush like this and then just blend it out. All right, let's move on to the under eyes. I'm going to use my Charlotte Tilbury under eye corrector. I love this thing. I think it's really amazing. And sometimes on really natural makeup days, I won't even put another concealer on top because if you just use a touch of this, you can get away with wearing it alone because it just corrects those circles and adds just a hint of brightness without being too unnatural looking. But of course, it's also great before or your regular concealer as well if you want more coverage. You see how that just brightened my under eyes without adding to orange or salmon of a color? Now I'm actually gonna mix two concealers on my under eyes. I'm not the biggest fan of the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Away concealer, but I'm gonna use it today because I'm trying to finish it. The color that I have is just too bright and I find the formula to be pretty drying underneath the eyes. I'm just gonna put a little bit of that in the inner corner. Mine is a little bit dried up, honestly. It's ready to be thrown away and I don't think I'll repurchase it. And I'm gonna use a touch of my e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer because this one is a bit too deep for me, as you can see. So we're just gonna mix them together and get the perfect potion. So make sure both colors really had a chance to blend into each other if you're gonna do this. So that way it doesn't look like dark out here and then only bright in the inner corner. You really have to mush the two colors together. And then I'm going to to set the under eyes with my Magic Loose Setting Powder. I like this powder a lot. I feel like Charlotte does have some better powders, but overall it's a nice setting powder. Nothing extremely special about it, but I have been enjoying it. It's not my favorite for setting the under eyes because I feel like sometimes, depending on which concealer you're using it with, it can darken the under eyes or make it look a little bit 
too textured. It just depends on the concealer that you're using. I'm gonna set the inside of my face as well. So to bronze today, I'm of course gonna use my Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Bronzer. I was gonna use my Film Star Bronzing Glow because it's been a while since I've used that, but looking at the colors of the quad, it's gonna be a bronzy look. I'm using a Refer number five brush for this, and I don't wanna apply it too much because my skin is a little bit more on the fair side nowadays, obviously with winter. Um, so I'm just gonna use a light hand with this product. We will do a blush and bronzer and all of that after the eyeshadow quad, so let's get into it. If you want more of the details on this collection as a whole, I would recommend you check out my original video of the original two palettes. But if you don't know, this is a collection of three eyeshadow palettes and a few other things as well, mostly having to do with complexion. So they changed the packaging for this collection. As you can see, it has this beautiful star design. She released the three palettes all at different times. This one was the last one to join the team. It does look like it's only currently available on the Charlotte Tilbury website if you're interested. And here's what it looks like. I haven't even touched it yet. It has this gorgeous Hollywood embossment. This is $53 and this color is Eyes of a Star. This is described as a gold, amber, chocolate brown, and terracotta palette. Honestly, of the four, just by looking at it, this is the prettiest, you guys. They really did save the best color story for last. Now, just like the other two, I do feel as though it's not necessarily a unique color story, but here we're talking depth. You can see they all kind of have that similar satiny formula. So this one, it looks really pretty. I don't know, it looks like a great basic palette, but I really enjoy the colors. I'm gonna use just a touch of my Kaleidos eye primer. This a touch and in case you missed this these are made in Italy and they do have an 18 month shelf life we're not going to do anything crazy because I do just want to get a feel for the formula so hmm with a BK 202 we're gonna go into this shade right here and I'm gonna focus this in the outer corner right here so I'm gonna just place my initial application and then I'm gonna blend it out from there as per usual it's blending out really nicely it's a pretty soft color but I'm sure you can build it up so that's just with one layer and it blended out really really nicely so it's really great if you're kind of a beginner to shadow because it's not going to be too hard to work out and you can use a heavy hand and it's still gonna look really nice a refer number 12 brush I'm also gonna work this along the lower half of the lash line and this color isn't pulling very satiny on the eyelid. It works great as a matte shade. Now it's not a drying matte, so mature lids, you're really going to love this formula because it looks matte on the eyes, but it's not going to make your eyes look dry. All right, let's play around with this golden shade and we're gonna apply this to the center of the lid, kind of leaving just a little bit of the front part of the lid open. Really pretty, let's try it out with a brush. I've been loving the Tom Ford number 11 brush for these luxury shimmers in particular. Wow, that almost applied even better with this brush. And this palette already, I would say, packs more depth than the other two palettes. And now we're gonna go in with the lightest shade. I'm using a Wayne Goss number seven brush and we're gonna pack this in the inner corner and I'm not getting as much gleam as I was hoping. I wish she would have made this shade more sparkly like she normally does with the shade because it's actually matching the other textures in this palette. You know I like the sparkle. Let me apply with my finger just to see if you get any more out of that. Not really, but it's still really pretty. All right, now we're gonna build some depth. I'm using my refer 14 brush and we're going into the deep shade so let's see how this does so I'm starting it off along the lower lash line really nice so that did build a little bit of depth I'm going into my refer at number 12 brush and I want to build the depth right here in the outer corner the shade actually is not as pigmented as some of her other formulas like the formulas in all three of these palettes are different than her regular line. In her regular line, these would pack so much more of a punch. Now that doesn't mean it's bad. You know, if you are newer to makeup or you prefer the soft kind of formula, you've never been a fan of those super pigmented mattes, then I think you will really like it. Oh, I just dropped my brush. Because there is something to be said about how well these formulas work. 
So I do like it, don't get me wrong. But for this shade in particular, personally with the formulas that I prefer, I wish it did pack a little bit more of a punch so I could use it as a shadow liner. Bridge this over. I'm gonna jump back into this shade and kind of blend everything out. All right, so overall, I think the quad is really beautiful. It's kind of nondescript though. It's not something you don't already have in your collection. Everything worked really well. I think what I don't like about this, I would say is I like a little bit more of her sparkle and dimension that she adds in her palettes. This one doesn't have it. It really is a true satin eye look, which is really gorgeous. I think if you have more mature eyelids, you would really enjoy this. And if you have more of a deeper complexion, I also think this one would make a great every day palette. It would be a little bit more soft on your skin tone, but still really stunning because I do think you can build these colors up a little bit more. Of the three, I think this one is probably my favorite. I just think it's a really great wearable palette. There are other palettes in her line though that I do prefer. So if you want to shell out the $53 for a Charlotte Tilbury quad, none of these three are the direction that I would recommend. Also, let's quickly talk about how this has almost half the product of her regular quads. So yeah, I mean, it's really, really nice. It's really pretty. If the color story speaks to you and you like the more gelée type of formulas that are a little bit more soft and satin, I do think you would enjoy this, but it's personally not my favorite. All right, let's um finish up the rest of this look. I think for eyeliner today, I'm gonna keep it pretty soft and I'm gonna go with the Barbella Brown Rockin' Coal Pencil. I've been wanting to play around with this a little bit more. I'm not as familiar with her eye coal form. Formula. So I'm going to quickly just do a quick baby wing that I always do. That was a really, really nice pencil, a very easy, smooth application. I'm going to use the Push Up Lashes Mascara now really quickly. So I'm gonna pop on some falsies really quick, then we'll be back to finish the lips. Oh my goodness, you guys. I almost forgot to do blush and highlights. <laughs> I'm a little bit out of order. Normally I have my cheeks put on by now, uh, but I'm gonna dig into this Stone Rose Instant Look in a Palette, and I'm gonna go for the lower blush right here. I've been really enjoying this palette. I've been enjoying using this as the only thing to create my look, really following along with the steps that it gives, and I've also been enjoying just kind of digging into this palette. I really enjoy the bottom half in particular. I think the eyeshadows, you know, are a little bit dull for my taste, but the cheek products are absolutely beautiful. Look at this gorgeous rosy blush. Highly recommend this palette, especially if you're short for time. It really is nice just to have everything all in one. And I did just mention that it's been a while since I've used my Filmstar Bronze and Glow. I have the shade Light. So I'm just gonna use the highlight in here, which is a really nice, gorgeous, soft highlighter to give you that glow from within. I know I'm not using my favorite Charlotte Tilbury highlighter right now. I was trying to dig into things I haven't used that frequently recently because I'm always using my Charlotte Tilbury stuff. Lips, I pulled the lip cheat in the shade Iconic Nude. It's an iconic color, I love it. And then I picked out Super Nude as the lipstick for today. I just thought it would go really beautiful with the eye look. And it does, I was right. <sighs> Let me get myself together, you guys. All right, and here is the final look. As always, Charlotte is one of the best brands to get an everyday look with. To sum it up with the focus of today's video, the Eyes of a Star Flawless Eye Filter Palette. It's a good palette. It's nothing special though, and I will say it's probably my favorite of the three that came out, but I also like a lot of her palettes a lot more. So that is all I have for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you aren't subscribed to my channel already, I would love it if you would consider taking time to do so. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.